<laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. David gives great hugs. They're like these big bear hugs. <laughs> so thank you all for being here tonight. And I'm so thrilled to be here tonight to celebrate 25 years of the GLAAD Media Awards. As David has mentioned, I was work I've been working in media for 17 years and have a deep understanding and respect for the power of this industry, especially when it comes to advocating for the LGBT community. I'm so thankful for brave visionaries like former GLAAD president Joan Gary, who's here with us tonight. Raise that hand, Joan. Along with David Mixner and quite a few others who fought the fight so that today I can live the life that I love. So now I say, Welcome to GLAAD 2.0. It is a whole new world out there. It really is. I have a woman I love and cherish, my wife, Kristen. <laughs> Who ever thought we could say wife or husband? I got to put a ring on it. <laughs> we, we got married in a church with all of our family, our friends, and our work colleagues celebrating with us. This classic wedding picture becomes colorful when I share with you <laughs> that my son and daughter were the ring bearer and flower girl. I can reveal that things get even more colorful still when I share that our twins aren't exactly twins, my wife and I got pregnant on the exact same day. Ooh. And if you think <laughs> that sounds like a good idea, <laughs> it actually was, it was actually heavenly. We shared cravings, we laughed through swollen ankles, but it did come to a screeching halt when the babies were born. <laughs> Hormones set in, and well, I think you can probably get the picture. But you always have to remind yourself, what's better than two little bundles of joy? <laughs> this is actually how I met Glad. Kristen and I wrote a book called Times Two about our dual pregnancies. Before the book was published, we were advised to connect to get powered up for a book tour with GLAAD. GLAAD helped us tell our story in our voice in a winning way. I knew from my firsthand experience that, be, that one day I wanted to be a part of this powerful organization. When I learned there was a search on for the new CEO, I thought, honey, the search is over. Here I am. <laughs> hey. For me, this is going to be personal. So now I'm rolling my sleeves up, stepping in and stepping up. And if you ask anyone who knows me, they will tell you there is nothing that excites me more than a good fight. <laughs> We're fighters. Well, 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 actually, maybe a pair of fierce shoes. Think of me, think of me as an activist in fabulous stilettos. But truly, I want to make a difference, and my fight is to, is to make the, this world a better place for the next generation. Yes. So it's been four months being the Olivia Pope of America's premier LGBT advocacy, advocacy group. And I want to share with you the insider view of what it's like to take the steering wheel of a race car in motion. For starters, 
There have been an incredible amount of media moments that needed the team's expertise and full focus. The Olympics in February represented a crucial occasion for GLAAD to shape the, nav the narrative. To advocate is at the heart of GLAAD. You couldn't hear the word Sochi without thinking about the dangers that Russian LGBT citizens faced. It's all part of GLAAD's broader athletic media endeavor, supporting Michael Sam's choice to come out, working with Jason Collins, and with other out athletes, Derek. We are moving fans, and, espe and especially sports management, from he's what to so what. And several years of GLAD's work has just paid off at Facebook, where the strategy GLAD built with executives allows trans youth to safely express who they are in their own words. Yes. To educate is one of GLAD's most important tools to bring about change. We are fortunate to have Jenny Boylan as our first transgender co-chair of GLAD's National Board of Directors. Jenny, where's Jenny? Woo! Just this week, she announced she's moving to New York to be a writer in residence at Bernard. Welcome to New York. You're in the Big Apple now, Jenny. But really, Jenny brings a front row passion to help GLAAD be an important voice in the transgender movement. And the point of this is that as the world evolves, so does GLAAD. So where am I now at this point in my new leadership role? It must be March, just in time for the St. Patrick's Day Parade standoff. <laughs> on Fifth Avenue. As you might know, the 253-year-old institution bans our people and organizations from marching openly. When I shared that I wanted to take it on, a number of respected advisors strongly recommended against it, claiming that the current president of the parade would need to retire or die for that ban to be lifted. That seemed preposterous. This one is especially personal for me. I'm an Irish Catholic woman, and I grew up marching in that band with my mother, in that parade with my mother. But now I can't march with my kids and ask them to hide the family they are a part of, and that's not how we live today. So Glad took this on with an open letter to the Daily News, saying that this band is outdated, harmful, and hurtful. Then we started calling sponsors, and we spoke to Heineken, who pulled out very quickly, and Guinness followed just as quickly. It made national headlines. Because of Glad, we shifted the media narrative from harmless shamrock celebration to the genuine pain the parade puts on Irish Catholic families. It's been four months of success and learning for me at GLAAD. We are a team focused on advocating, educating, and have added a new component to our arsenal, protecting. We have to protect the phenomenal progress we have made over the past quarter of a century. There are some that say our work is done, and I say we have twice the work. In addition to the programs you've heard about tonight, GLAD is focused on three mission-critical priorities. We are taking our fight internationally with our GLAD Global Voices program. Yes. Helping LGBT communities win life-threatening battles in Uganda, Nigeria, and Russia. 
I in fact, I just returned from London, where I met with both the conservative and labor leaders. I was inspired by their reverence for the work that we do, and, I'm ex and I am excited by their invitation. In their words, please join us. We are working with our partners in the South, like Marcel and Shelley and Casey, to build and strengthen our Southern Stories program. Our Help Engage Pro Youth program called Hey is making the world a better place for the LGBT youth. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> My four months of on-the-job training have proven that we still have to face down intense opposition every day. We have to fight harder and be more nimble. Our opponents, such as the National Organization for Marriage and Family Research Council, are better funded than we are, and they are combining strategy and malice. We, we, how do we do, how do we continue to be a force? We do it together, and we do it with your help. GLAD leads to positive change and a world where everyone can live the life they love. And we can beat them. We need your help. I want to leave you with one last thought. I didn't dream of living the life I live today because it seemed beyond reach. It was a fantasy. It was definitely not a possibility. Yet today, in my office, I have framed pictures of me and my family in the moments we cherish. You know the kind I'm talking about. The kids are jumping in the waves. The other one is they have chocolate all over their mouth. And my personal favorite, my family at last year's New York City Pride Parade. It was the first time my twins marched and we marched with GLAD. These always remind me of how fortunate I am to live my dream. But in my role on an everyday basis, I am consistently reminded that others are less fortunate and for their dreams, for them, their dreams are really nightmares. As a mother, I reacted with profound horror a couple of weeks ago when I learned of Zachary. Zachary is a four-year-old little boy in Oregon who was beaten to death because of the way he walked and talked. A four-year-old. Do you know who did this to him? His mother, his mother thought he might be gay. This is what keeps me up at night. These are the stories that the media needs to tell and that GLAD needs to report on. Our work is not done. These are the lives that are still at risk. Now I'm leading GLAD, and I'm proud to be an LGBT warrior to help the next generation live their dreams and create their own framed pictures. And by being here tonight, I appreciate that every single one of you is a warrior too. And this is your chance to be a part of the future. Thank you. Thank you.